welcome back guys how are you guys doing um i am just going i just kind of want to go ahead and, and, and touch base on a couple things before we get into the second part of this part two on this p-pump 24 valve i do have a couple things to explain um the number one being i'm kind of trying to take it easy right now i just had all four of my wisdom teeth pulled out and um yeah so i'm not supposed to lift anything i didn't even go to work today because i didn't know how i was gonna be feeling now that it's later on in the day i probably could have went but I'm going nuts sitting inside, so I just figured if I come out here and just talk, I'll be fine. I'm not going to lift anything that heavy. Although I do want to try to show you guys something if I can. But just, that's why I'm so calm and just trying not to be super excited. If these blood clots fall out, I'll probably get dry sockets and I don't want to mess with that. Um, but anyways, a lot has changed since the last time you guys seen this. Whenever we ended out part one, we were taking this timing cover off. Well, now we have the P-pump on it. And the reason be is because I, I recorded all of it. Me and Mason came out here and pretty much had this video halfway done. And I had it saved on my phone, on my uh, video editing app, because I do all my editing off of my iPhone. I live, as you guys can see, in the middle of the woods. I can't even get Wi-Fi back here. So I have to do it all off of my phone and upload at work. Well, I ended up deleting it out of my gallery. And when I deleted it out of my gallery on my phone, I lost it off of my uh, video editing app because it said I couldn't use it. It was still on there, but it was like, uh-uh. So anyways, I just want to touch base with you guys. This is what this is about. This is nothing but talking. I want to walk through the steps of what we had to do since part one to get us to where we are. It's very simple, guys. If you guys are doing this on your own, then just listening to my instructions, you'll be fine. So, basically the last step you saw, the valve cover was off of this thing. The valve train was out. All the rocker assemblies, they were off the truck. We had dowels, half inch wooden dowels. You can get them at Walmart. Just a half inch wooden dowel. You nail them into the tappets, okay? And then, once you get that lifted off and you have your everything stripped off your vacuum, you know, your vacuum pump is off, your VP44 was off, then you could take this cam out. It's two 13 millimeter bolts right here. So once you took that out, you could pull the cam out. Now, um, I really wanted to get that on video to show you guys how to do it, but basically you just have to lift it and walk it up. I thought about doing it right now, but I don't know if I should be lifting one with just having my teeth pulled out. I may try to get Mason to before we start the other video. Well, before um, this comes, like here in a couple minutes, it'll be like several days later for you guys. Uh, so this is how you pull the cam out. Obviously, you took those two bolts out. You have to kind of lift it from the bottom. That's the hard part what he's trying to do. He's actually trying to lift it up back of the cam. You have to hold it straight. It's really tough. Yeah, that's cheating. That's cheating, mister. You can't do that. Just because we can see it right here doesn't mean you get to. Anyway, this will give you a real good representation of what he's doing. He's trying to uh, slide all those through those bearings where they sit in. There it goes. Really good representation. What you're actually trying to do. You guys can see one of the tappets. Just pull it right out. But yeah, guys, obviously whenever <clears throat> it was in the truck, we had those dowels shoved up to hold those tappets up. All right, and then we took it out, and then we lubed it up with some good assembly lube. I don't know where it's at. It's over here somewhere. We basically covered this thing in assembly lube, and then he just sticks it back in.
And that's where it gets to be a real pain in the ass, <clears throat> is right at the back. <clears throat> And then you gotta line your marks up. Yeah, we did. We didn't turn this one over, did we? Yeah. Let's see, it's right there. There's two holes right here. You put those two holes. There you go, like that. And there you have it. That's how you take the cam out and put it back in. Um, we are making another video tonight, but anyways, getting off topic. So you pull that camshaft out, and then there's bolts to go around the oil pan. Um, there's bolts in here. You'll just take all those out, and then you will um, switch your, this is the new timing cover. You'll take that VP44 one off. You'll clean up your gasket surface, and then you'll put this P-pump cover back on it. Um, you do want to make a, this is for the killer dowel pin. It's just a piece of metal to uh, hold that in place because that's they will fall out and fall down in between the gears and they can trash a motor so that's just a piece of like little thin metal that we made that fits over that dowel and the bolt still goes through it so we got all our bolts on here i use red loctite on these when i put them back on and once you have that on you can stick your cam back in once again whenever mason gets over here in a couple days i'll show him i will edit it into this part right here you'll see the cam come out and go back in if not right now you would have seen it a couple seconds ago um, and then you will put your vacuum pump on. That's super simple to put on. Just two bolts. Um, but for you guys doing this, this is your first time P-pumping it, and you're just watching it for information. Uh, there's two things you're going to have to switch, off, switch out whenever you come over here. So whenever you have this cover off, there's a little hole right here that feeds the P-pump. You're going to want to take that fitting out off of your 12-valve engine. And you're also going to want to take this bracket out. This is off the 24-valve. So there's going to be a bracket that you're going to want to transfer over. And there's going to be oil line fitting that you're going to want to transfer over. It comes out and it has two outlets. So you transfer those, take them off your 12 valve engine, and they go right in place on this uh, 24 valve engine. Okay. Hope you guys are following this. I apologize. This is really shitty of me to do this to you guys. But this is how I'm having to do it. Um, and then that... Uh, you see the oil line down there? That goes to the bottom of the vacuum pump for oil feed, and then that one goes to the top. Then you can bolt your vacuum pump back on. It's just two bolts. There's one right here, and then there's one on the bottom. And then you bolt your P-pump on. Those bolts are hard to get to in the back. I still have the socket down in there because I was running late last night and didn't have time, time to get the socket out, but there's four bolts that hold it on. And then your bracket that you transferred over, those two bolts will go down into it. And that pretty much is everything that I forgot to get on, that I couldn't get on video. I got it on video, but like I said, it all got erased. So now we're to this point, and yeah, I will see you guys. For you guys, it's going to be right now. For me, it's a couple days later. So <clears throat> we are currently working on the 24-valve uh, APPS. This is his Crazy Carl's kit. Same one we used on Bailey's truck. Um, hope that wasn't too hard to follow. Hope you guys are understand where we are currently on the truck um but you know basically to use the, the factory throttle cable brackets this is uh, the two pieces we are going to need i'm sorry this is what we're going to need is this kit so we're working on getting it installed it's pretty straightforward you just follow the instructions and put it together you have to drill a couple holes in these brackets but that will allow us to use this tps sensor it comes on the truck but right now we're fighting getting drilled through that because it's a super hard steel so we're gonna have to find a drill bit We'll drill through it, and then we will get that done. Now we're working on hooking these return lines up and getting them mocked up. We don't really have everything to do it. This is the factory return that goes to the VP, and then this is just a P-pump return. Simply cut this thing with a, pair, with a brake line cutter, and then cut it back here, and just tie them together. This return will just run to that factory return back there, the back of the head, because this right here is 12 mil, and this is going to be larger than so. This will be like 14 13 mil, I can't remember. Um, or this will be 14 mil and this will be 12 mil. So yeah, we just have to tie those together. It'll be pretty simple. And we need to time the pump. We need to get that pump gear on here and lock it down. And then um, we can really start throwing the front end back on the truck. And uh, yeah, pretty much just in the assembly process at this point. So now I've got to time this thing and uh, we're just gonna time it at stock for now. We're not going to go and do anything other than just what it would be timed at stock. Um, 
normally if we would use that 12 valve cam, which we didn't, you'd be able to would just turn the engine over until you could lock the pin in on the back of this camshaft. Instead, we're gonna just use the injector hole. We'll take the injector out and stick a screwdriver in it whenever both these rockers are loose and that screwdriver is at the very tip top. Either way you turn it goes down, you're at top dead center and you'll also be aligned down here on your crank somewhere. Um, but that's how you get really accurate. Well, that's how we get really accurate is by taking the injector out. Whenever you move it both ways, you can find true top dead center. And then we'll come down here on the side of our pump and we will take this little bolt right here out and you turn this pump over until you see a tab. And once you see that tab, you'll stick this pin in and I'll show you here in a second. And then our pump will be locked. At, uh, that'll be where it's pin timed. And then our engine will be at top dead. And then we will just put this gear on. So now I've got our pump uh, pin timed. We've got our engine at top dead center. So you can just take this. You need to get it extremely clean because it's a tapered shaft. So get all the oil and everything off of it because it will slip on you. And then it doesn't matter how you stick it on. There's no alignment, you just stick it on. Take this locking washer and this nut. You can torque it to 130 pounds, 150. I don't know what the correct torque spec is. We'll just hit it with an impact gun for a very long time and leave it like that. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close out the part two of this video. I know this was just pretty much a lot of me talking. I hope you guys were able to follow along. Um, I do apologize, but we're just waiting on parts. I lost some of the footage of us working on it and I had to get my surgery in the middle of all this get my teeth taken out so I'm just kind of uh, on pretty much I can't do a lot and um, yeah I mean I apologize this part two of this kind of sucks I know but uh, tomorrow is Friday and Mason is going to pick up the uh, anteater so we have a way to control the transmission in the truck he's gonna go he's gonna drive to firepunk in the morning he's gonna pick that up and this weekend at some point we're going to try to wrap this thing up and get it driving and we'll finish out and make the part three so you guys um, can have the video done and see what all it took for us to do so if you guys like the video hit that like button subscribe if you're new to the channel we appreciate each and every one of you guys watching we'll see you on the next one